Hello everyone. So today's lecture is about another basic concept about uh, graph neural networks. So let me remind you about the graph neural networks. So it is one of representation learning methods. So we take the input graph data, which is composed of set of vertices and set of edges. And the output is low dimensional representation. So the dimensionality is the V by K. So each node has K different flood values. So when we take this input, so we are able to reduce their dimensionality into the two K dimension, in this case, two dimension. So, and we apply downstream tasks such as node classification and link prediction. So that was the basic, and you know, we have built the, 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 the most, the, the simplest methods, right? So in the graph neural networks, we, we, we summarize the graph neural networks using this one figure. So we take the vertex, vertex and key dimensional representation, for example, to this node D, to get the representation, we consider there it, the first neighbor, and we consider this, and E's representation is from the, the D, and F is from C and D, and the C is from A and B and C and D. So in this case, it considers two hop neighbors, and we are able to decide the final representation of D. And at the first layer, we give the input representation using the attribute vector, right? It could be um, some gender or religious view and location, and it could be any feature matrix. And we also told, we assume that all the attribute matrix, the attribute information is, should be available before the learning. So that was the precondition for the, the particular GCN. So we also have talked about the generalized version of GCNs. So it takes the previous layers representation in neighborhood function. So neighborhood function could return the nearby labor or random luck or any others. So it depends your data set. So it takes input for the first layer, the attribute factor and so and from the second in in the to, to the final layer, we get the input representation from the previous layer's representation, and we average and we transform the self embedding and send the information to the weight matrix and the activation layer, and we decide the final representation. So, because we talked about it. And we also reached to the another generalized presentation. We aggregate nearby neighbors and we combine with the self node. So we talked about the two different cases, GC and, and graph sage. 
in the previous lecture. And let me introduce three different types of aggregators. The first one is mean aggregator. So for example, we get the neighbors and the self node. So in this case, we're considering the self node at the same time. For this, assume that we have four nodes to get the mean aggregator. Assume that this is the, the dimensionality about the representation, for example, D, and this is the four node. So assume that we're considering the four different nodes. We get some flood value from the previous the layer. And at first we get the mean. And we get the mean from the 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 column wise the mean value from here. And we can fill out the some flop values here and we get uh, this vector and we multiply by uh, this dimensional vector and we get another representation. So this is a mean aggregator. That basically this is the the same as the original GCN. And the pooling aggregator, so we in this case we realize the max pooling. For the max pooling we just the instead of comparing the mean value from the each column. We take just maximum value and assign this. A maximum value, assign this. Assume that this is the maximum value in this candidate. We assign the maximum value. But this way we get another uh, D-dimensional vector and multiply by the W pool and we get the final, oh, I'm sorry, so Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. In this case, really different. So in this case, we get this four different nodes and we get four different uh, D-dimensional vector and multiply W pole and then another uh, the dimension vector we get and we take the maximum value from the each corresponding positions right consider this and this and this and this we assign here consider this and this and this and this we can assign here something like that So this is the, the example of the pooling aggregator. And another one is the LSTM the aggregator. Uh, in this case, we take the neighborhood input and you guys LSTM. So as you know, LSTM takes the sequential input data, but your neighbor who doesn't have the sequential information. So to utilize the the LSTM, so we just uh, randomly pick the neighbors and and make a the instantiation about the 
the random or some, some one seconds. So which means assume that we have four different neighbors, their order was zero, one, two, three. And by randomization at the first, first epic, we put zero, three, two, one. And we train the LSTM with this. So with this, uh, this represents just index. So in this case, we get the zero, three, two, one. And here, the row come to here. And here, third one come to here. here, second row, come to here. So with this way, we had sequential representation anyway, and we can get the final, I'm sorry, final representation, and we multiply by the W, and then we get, finally we get here. So another epic, we get different index orders. So it was well, zero, three, two, one, maybe two, three, one, zero. And by searching the row vector from the previous layer, we get the, the corresponding rows vector, make another sequence and train the LSTM. So that is called LSTM aggregator. And from the, the view of the uh, this GNNs, which is composed of the aggregate function and the combined function, we can also think about the, the GAT function. The GAT is the shortened, shorted name of the graph attention network. For the GAT, uh, to decide the node V's representation at layer K, in we additionally consider the the coefficient alpha. So previously to GCN layers, they consider representation of B, representation of C and D, so to decide representation of A, because they are connected. We they just sum, and we get the weighted average, and multiply by the weight matrix, and you get the final representation, right? That was the, the previous, the GCN layer, but instead, instead we we have this coefficient, not just uh, average or just sum the information. We 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 can compute the relative importance we list back to the A, it will assign another flat value and adjust um, to control the, the, the summation function. So before this, we just purely just sum, and that was a GCN. In this case, we may assume the, the, the all uh, alpha is, the, the alpha is the equal to one. So 
So in this case, we put another value and we try to train the coefficient in this neural network. So that is the idea of the GAT. So to get the coefficient, we compute the tensional weight and get the weight is some. Uh, so yeah, the same sentence, right? So to get the alpha, we need to compute the attention coefficient. How to get it? So to decide the relative importance, first we consider the original node, the target node V, and uh, one of the neighbors U. So we get the U and V, and initially we get the, the transportation by using the WK. So go through the linear transformation. We combine those two information and we may decide the alpha. For example, the tension function could be just concatenate the output of the linear transformation when we multiply by another the tension the matrix, we can get a constant. So um, this h u k minus one it corresponds to, for example, d-dimensional. And by having the multiplication in their output, of course, still corresponds to, to the d. By concatenation, we have two d uh, dimensionality. And this double ATT is uh, the same to the, the size the one dimensional vector. So I mean, it is one by two D. It is also one by two D, and we compute the, their two D by one. So when we multiply these two vector and we get one constant right this is the the e view so the each node pair we get one constant it decides relative importance and we can sum summarize uh, these information considering this alpha, and we can decide the final representation of node V. And then, uh, using EV, so I'm sorry, so, so we, we still going to the alpha, but not yet. So we get the EVU. Using the EVU, we and normalize by considering the all the neighbors EVU. So in this case, we have different three different EVU, right? So E A A B and E A C and E A D, right? So to decide alpha A B. We're considering exponential function of the E A V over the exponential function of E A B E A C and E A D, right? And then we get the alpha value. So now, now we get 
this. And at the same time, we can employ uh, the, the different the multi-head. So multi-head attention means we get three different the coefficient value, which means we have three different the attention the matrix matrix the attention vector actually, and we also can get a different the weight function actually. So it should be k one. So this should be different for the the attention head. So the meaning of multi-head attention means we have, uh, in this case, we have three head attention. So which means we have three sets of trainable variables. So in this case, trainable variable is are com composed of this coefficient and weight matrix, right? So we prepare, we define three sets of these trainable variables, and we can, we had we get the different results of the output, the representation, and we aggregate once again, and then we get final representation of the V. So this makes you to learn more the diverse representation to decide the A. The compared to considering just one set of train available, and we can train different aspects about the neighbor. So depending on your class labels, for example, when you are trying to identify the, the, the gender of the note, and then the, the boys' communication patterns and girls' communication patterns are different, right? When we have single trainable variables, it is difficult to represent Difficult to have just single single aggregation aggregation pattern, but by having the two, for example, two sets of the trainable variables, it's likely to get the boys communication pattern. The boys uh, the trainable variables for boys and trainable variables for boy girls. So we we hope. Hopefully we get the better the trainable matrices and we expect a better representation in this day. So this aggregation runs at one single layer. So in the previous to generalize the GNN in here. Here, aggregation function, we can employ the GAT, right? To decide the representation of F, and we utilize the relative importance by computing the alpha FC, alpha FD, something like that. 